and I identify as Amendment 1D. Speaker, recognize the Representative Dill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, one of the most unfair pr provisions of the legislation we're debating here today is that workers can choose to be non members, pay no money to the union, but still have the union be forced to represent them. They benefit from union negotiations on their behalf, and they receive increased pay, benefits, and pensions to come from collective bargaining. And if the non union member has a problem with how the boss is treating them, the union has to represent them in the grievance process. If they refuse, the non member can sue the union for failure to represent them. No other institution in the United States faces this kind of burden. Can you imagine trying to run a government on this principle? How could state government pay for schools, pay for roads, and pay for police and fire protection if individual citizens refuse to pay taxes because they didn't like the policies of one governor or one legislator? Thank you. Ironically, Mr. Speaker, business associations like the Chamber of Commerce refuse to live by the rules they seek to impose on unions. The Chamber restricts its services to dues-paying members. When an employer in Owensboro, Kentucky, asked the Chamber if they could retain membership without paying dues, the Chamber said no, <laughs> pointing out that, quote, it would be against Chamber bylaws and policy to consider any organization or business a member without dues being paid. The vast majority of this chamber's annual revenues come from member dues, they said, and it would be, fair, it would be unfair to other members to allow an organization not paying dues to be included in member benefits. And that is precisely what we are trying, or what some are trying to impose on unions in Michigan. There's no such thing as a free lunch. If workers vote to organize a union, everyone should pay their fair share of the union's cost. That's why I'm supporting the amendments before us. It will require all workers covered by a union contract to at least pay their fair share of dues or the money equivalent to the cost of collective bargaining and represent representational activities. That's only fair. It's the way the rest of society functions. We should require all workers benefiting from union representation to financially support the union that represents them. I respectfully ask for a record vote, Mr. Speaker. Representative Dillon has requested a record vote. Is the debate supported? Yeah.